2022 and uh, I'm making this video hopefully for anyone out there who is really interested in the Wallapini but uh, doesn't isn't in a place to um, take on the project uh, because when I started looking into it uh, and re realized the resources that were required and the work and time that was going to be required uh, it it just wasn't practical so um, I've been obsessed with the idea of the Wallapini. I got really, really into it, uh, very enthused about it. Um, but like I said, it's a, it's a pretty big undertaking to do the full walk-in Wallapini. So I'm trying kind of a hybrid of a Wallapini and a cold frame. Uh, what I did here, uh, by the way, this box down here, this is uh, 44 inches wide or um and it is 127 inches long i forget what that equates to in feet um but approximately 10 by three and a half four feet something like that um uh what i did here is um this metal structure this uh they use these to ship some pipes uh across the ocean and it's just not worth it to send them back. So my friends were able to uh, pick up some of these for pretty cheap. And I just chopped up part of the structure. And um, I dug a hole here. Uh, the whole depth I dug to three feet. Uh, and then I have about 18 inches, two-ish feet of soil, uh, of uh, planting soil that I put in here. So it's a two foot depth, which means this soil height here is one foot lower um, than ground level. Um, this back wall, uh, you know, there's two feet underneath that. And then there's one foot of earth uh, that's straight earth behind it. Where this board begins, this is where I started to pile dirt uh, on top of the ground and it is piled up to um you know right up to the board here so i'll show you the back side so here i just mound earth up against the structure by the way this back wall um i made this 44 inches tall um i did that because it just made these angles here the angle of the greenhouse uh, an easy 45 degree cut on each end um, there's an article and I'll try and find it to paste it but you know there is an optimal angle for uh, maximizing sun energy um, at specific angles for your location uh, for winter solstice time uh, I learned some really interesting stuff about that uh, specifically that you don't actually you don't have to be spot on with that. And if you're off by a little bit, um, it, it does very, very little uh, for your, uh, how much energy it can take in. So I will paste that um, in this video. So um, <clears throat> this back wall ended up banking up a bunch of earth. And then uh, I've also insulated this whole bank. So here, you know, I have a, a triangle cut right here. This whole back is enclosed with three quarter inch uh, insulation, foam insulation. And then uh, again, I've, I've buried this too. So this entire south facing wall is a, uh, a huge um, battery storage area now, this whole bank is just storing this uh, the sun that we're getting. And that's why I've painted the wall black is to maximize the amount of heat that it will collect. And it will store that heat um, in this bank, which I've insulated, and it will release that uh, energy back into the cold frame um, or well, whatever you want to call it. Um, in terms of ventilation, uh, I have not installed yet, but I have some, they sell these automatic um, vents, vent lifters that um, probably cost about 25 bucks. 
but they don't require uh, any sort of energy. It's just whenever the temperature gets to around 86, it starts to open and the hotter it gets, it opens more and more and more. So that's the vent for the upper portion of the greenhouse. The bottom vent, I will do the same thing with one of those vent openers right here. Um, anyways, what was happening in here, uh, I just, just finished this. This back wall, this these sides uh, didn't exist a couple of days ago. I planted this stuff in, I think, maybe mid-November. Um, I had this, so it was done up until here. It was dug in and I painted that black wall, that back wall black. Um, I planted this and kind of just let it go. I wasn't even covering this thing at nighttime. And I went out of the country for about a month. And uh, while I was gone, I, I saw that we had some single... Uh, digit temperatures around nine nine degrees while I was gone um, so I figured all of this stuff was totally dead when I got back shockingly it was um, not dead it certainly wasn't growing by any means and I figured it was done or it would be too traumatized to actually be able to come back but I started just throwing these panels before I had this done I would just lay them on top of this box and um, just to try and save these plants until I got the structure built and they actually started to kind of show a little bit of life again like these peas back here these were all grown out here laying over and, and you could tell were just not looking fresh but but this stuff on this back wall I think because you know it's collecting so much heat it's storing so much heat here um and mixed with the other foliage that it had kind of draped over this more fresh stuff. Um, these sprouts are looking uh, nice and fresh and I think that these plants might do okay. And I've got some romaine in here. Um, I've got some uh, cilantro. The cilantro, I'm, I'm just amazed that with that nine degree uh, night that this stuff held on and definitely the stuff close to the black walls um, have really done quite well. Um, so my goal with this whole project is to see how early I can start stuff, how late I can harvest stuff, um, and see if I could even, I mean, the real goal is to see if I could get some summertime stuff, uh, staying on through the winter. Uh, I mean, I don't have any expectations of that and I know it's not really in its natural cycle, but, um, I just find this to be a very fun experiment and we'll see what happens here. Um, I wish I, I don't know if I have anything else to say here. This thing, this wall is just up on hinges. I'll show you it closed. That's what it looks like. Um, by the way, I'm at about 5,000 feet in Southern Utah, just kind of outside of Zion National Park. Um, so I just planted a bunch of stuff, um, mostly a bunch of greens and stuff that I, I know for sure are really gonna thrive in this thing um, because this just went up and we didn't have any sun hitting this uh, since it's gone up. Um, I want to wait for that soil to warm up and I'm going to, I'm just going to throw in a bunch of summertime stuff too and just see what it does. Um, uh, we, sorry, just hopefully useful information for someone out there. Um, I did put this up and the past couple nights, so since I've put it up, there hasn't been any sun. So that, that back wall has not been collecting any energy to, um, release in the evening hours, but as it stands right now, um, it has been staying eight to 10 degrees warmer in here than it has been uh, on the exterior of the greenhouse. So I'm uh, pretty excited to see what sort of temperature difference it delivers since it's now collecting some um, heat through that back wall from the power of the sun. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully I have an update for you guys here. There's the yurt out there, of course, some motos. Um, and uh, 
yeah, hopefully this is helpful to someone and hopefully this thing works. Take care.